Hello, I'm Brita, webmistress of the dark. Last time I showed you how to carve your gravestones, now they're all ready for painting. So we're going to paint a base coat of flat gray first. We want to make sure we cover every white speck of foam everywhere because we're going to be using spray paint in the aging technique and the solvents in the spray paint will eat your foam away if you're not careful about every little speck. Make sure you use latex acrylic paint for your base coat because oil-based paint, the solvents in that will also eat away your foam. So we can mix the latex with a little bit of water. I like using a separate container so I don't have to worry about the can drying out. I found a, a perfect good gray in the oops section of my home improvement store so I got about five dollars for a gallon of paint which lasted me about 20 gravestones so you can make it last a long way. So use a brush you don't care about because you're going to be mushing it around. Don't go in stripes in all one direction because if you mush it around you're not going to always get completely solid coverage and that's okay it can work to your advantage because it'll look like natural variations in the stone as long as you don't go in stripes so smush it around make sure you get every little chip in the foam make sure it's protected from the spray paint i don't worry about the very bottom because that's going against the ground and it's not going to get any spray paint on the aging technique either but i go all the way to the edge for sure so once I get all the backs finished, then I let them dry completely, then I'm ready to flip them over and paint the epitaphs. Now that all the backs are dry, I can go ahead and do the epitaphs and the angels. So of course do the back of the angels while you're doing the back side. Get as much as you can that way. I'm going to start with the angel because I know that's most difficult and I want to get that drying as soon as I can. For the angels, load up your brush with a lot of paint. Slop it on there to make sure paint gets in all the little detail in the angel. Then once you make sure you get all, done all the detail, then you go back and even it out so you don't have globs everywhere. The angels you're not protecting against the spray paint, but you want to make sure they're all covered, otherwise they're not going to look like they're carved stone out of the same stone as the gravestone. You might need a finer brush to get into all the little nooks and crannies of the angels. So make sure you load up your brush with a lot of paint and then mush it messily right on top of where your carving is and then mush it down with the brush into the carved areas. Make sure you've got every little foam bit covered. And then on the wide areas, make sure you swirl it around so you don't have stripy brush marks. That's exactly why you use a brush you don't care about. Here the base coat is dry for all of our gravestones, so we're ready to do the aging technique. That's pretty simple, but it might be a little scary at first. All you need is a garden hose, preferably with a lesser flow attachment that kind of dribbles instead of full-on blast, and black spray paint. Matte finish, cheap is fine. So I'm going to take the spray paint in one hand and the water in the other. What you want to do first is wet down your gravestone and then what you're doing is you're simulating years and years and centuries of weather and dirt. So you're spraying on the rain and you're spraying on the dirt. And the combination of the two gets you nice little cool little rivulets and all sorts of fun stuff. So if you're scared, try it on the back of your gravestone first because you're going to need to age the back of the gravestone to make it match. So you can go ahead and practice there so you don't worry about ruining anything around your epitaphs. You also want to make sure your gravestones are at a slight angle so the water has somewhere to run. If you do it straight up and down, it's a little harder to aim and see what control what your aging technique is doing. So I have these propped up just at a little bit of an angle and then the water gets a chance to roll down nicely. If you get a spot too dark, just blast it with the, the hose before it gets a chance to dry. Also remember, you're doing this in the daylight. When it's darker at night, it's going to be a lot less of an effect. You need to have a higher contrast effect to have it actually show at night. Here I've gone ahead and aged the fronts of all my gravestones with the spray paint and the garden hose technique. You can keep playing with it for quite a while. As long as you have the gravestone wet, the spray paint is not settling and drying. I like how these turned out, but you'll notice you still can't see the epitaphs as well as you'd like to. So what I do is go back after these are dry and use a very light touch of 
watered down black paint with a fine brush to highlight all my carving detail. All the aging technique has now dried. You'll want to make sure you don't rub your hand or lean your arm on it because it is powdery spray paint that dried on the surface of the gravestone. So you can easily smudge it, you know, get it all over your arm. So be careful about that. What we're going to do now is we're going to accent all the carving. So even though you've done the aging technique, it's still not quite enough to get all in the grooves to make them actually stand out, especially at night in graveyard lighting effects. So I'm going to take very, very watered down black acrylic paint. This is just a little artist tube paint. And you want to water it down a lot because if you have it too black, it's just going to look like you wrote it on, not like you carved it. It's going to look a little cartoonish, not realistic. So I have a finer brush this time. This time I'm using one of my artist brushes because I'm just going to lightly brush in the carving areas. I'm not mushing like I was with the gray paint. Now obviously this is going to take a while because you're painting every single bit you carved. You'll be tempted probably to skip this step, but believe me, it's worth it in the end. If you get a little bit on the outside edge, just dab it really quickly before it dries. Then you'll have it in the groove, but not on the outside. Keep making sure you don't get too much paint on your brush. Remember, you can always add more later, but if you can't take it off, it's too dark. Once you get the hang of it, it's more like you're just guiding the very, very runny paint into the grooves where you've carved instead of really painting it. You want to make sure when you're almost done, see how the other spots have dried. They might have actually dried paler. If once you use watered down paint, when it's watered down enough, what happens is it evaporates so much, <laughs> because so much was water, that you may have a lot less color than you thought you did when you put it on when it was wet. So there might be some spots you want to go back, touch up to make it blend. If you have one letter that's a lot darker than the rest, it's kind of look kind of funny. If you have too much paint on your brush like that, really quickly go back with just water. Smear it out. If you've carved it well, then it'll just stay within the lines that you carved. Here's Emily's gravestone. It's all complete. We have the aging technique on there, and I've gone back with thinned down black acrylic paint and accented all the carving details so you can see it much better. In contrast, here is Penny's gravestone. It's been aged, so it has some nice streaks and drips everywhere, but it's a little hard to read the epitaph and to see the carving detail. That's why I go ahead and spend the time and effort to go back and do the accent painting. I'm much happier with the result of my graveyard, and I think you will be too. To save your gravestones, I just leave them this way, and I wrap, put them in plastic bags in my garage, and they'll have a little, you know, couple chips here and there. Maybe an angel's wing has fallen off. It's just a little touch up before the next year when I take them out again. So for setting up your graveyard, you want to stake the gravestones into the ground. You have various ways of doing that. I've used just little wire stakes and I've used riffing nails. You want to make sure there is a hole already in the gravestone that you can just slide over the stake. You don't want to pound your gravestone into the ground because it's only foam. Be careful with them. Also, to set up your graveyard, you probably want to make it more compact than the spacing of an actual graveyard would be. Also, stagger the gravestones between rows so you'll be able to see one row behind the other peeking through the other gravestones. So everyone will be able to see your, your graveyard that way. You can have fog or not. You must have lighting of some sort, otherwise it's going to be too dark to see all the work that you've spent <laughs> so much time on. So I set up a couple clamp lights or a lamp post. Uh, test your whole graveyard setup at least the night before in the dark so you see what your lighting is like. You can see where you can hide your fog machine if you're using one and do a whole dry one of your, of your graveyard. I hope you've enjoyed watching how to make your own haunted headstones. For more projects like this, you can buy my book, Eerie Elegance, at eerieelegance.com. I hope you have a fabulous Halloween and happy haunting!